Okay, audio check, quick check. One, two, three. Let's try a little bit louder. And then a little softer. Okay, we good. Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Hope everyone's doing well today. Um, I did change up my schedule, so I decided to cut streaming down to only three days a week. That way I can focus on one, schoolwork, and also planning more. I want to do more like stakey type streams from Mario Kart, so I'm thinking of ideas for that. So that's why I'm cutting it down two days. Uh, hopefully it'll also help with the average. <laughs> but you know, that's fine, that's fine. Um, yeah, so going into some more Stardew Valley today. There we go. So last week we finished off with week two of summer. Now we're heading into week three. And like I said, it's probably just going to be more grinding, that type of thing. Because I can't remember if we bought the house upgrade last week. I think we did. No, we must not have because we, we got a lot of money. I thought we... <laughs> Spent all that money. We got another shipping bin. Cool. I want to put that by the sheds. That way I can just ship off the pickled items once I get them. Okay, Kent wants a star fruit. For sure, man. We can do that. Okay, first thing we're going to do is check our weekly mission. That way we do not forget like we do every single freaking week. Yeah, I did not get a- I, I have found on the days where I stream the next day, I do not get a lot of sleep. I don't know if it's just like the anxiety or like it just happens to be a coincidence that I can't sleep on the nights before. Okay, let's see. Sorry, I have a mint in my mouth. I should take it out. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't I don't think we did the prism prismatic slime mission. So we can for sure do that one this week. <laughs> but I would like I knocked out at 10 p.m. and then I woke up randomly at 1 and then I couldn't go back to sleep till 5. <laughs> so I skipped exercising this morning, which is a, which is an L. But I did exercise twice yesterday. I worked out for a total of like an hour instead of 30 minutes yesterday. So like, I'm going to consider that making up for this morning. You got to be careful not to pick the poppies. Okay, I don't think I need to buy more seeds. I have a boatload of parsnips. Nope, those aren't parsnips. Those are beets, I believe. If you can't tell, I don't eat veggies, so I cannot tell the difference between any of them. Those hops look too much like artichokes, and I get excited because I love artichokes. Yeah, we have 83 of those. We should be fine. We should not need more seeds by the end of season. If we do, we can buy them later. No biggie. It's funny because sometimes I have to look at my controller <laughs> to see which buttons I'm pressing. <laughs> Pro gamer here, guys. This is why I can't play any, like, FPS or shooters. It's just too much for me. The brain can't handle it. Yeah, I want to chop a few trees and then we can head on to the mines and search for that prismatic slime. Yeah, so I do have a topic generated today because I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't think of anything really to talk about that I haven't already. So let's see. The question is, would you eat at a restaurant if food is really good but the restaurant was dirty or disgusting? Well, the thing that I don't really understand Cause like fast food, you know it's gonna be shit food. And like usually a lot of like fast food, food kitchens are disgusting. Like if anyone has worked food service, I bet you can tell like if they deep clean or not, right? And when I worked at the fast food places that I, when I used to work at fast food, like I would spend any downtime cleaning, right? Because when there's like mold and shit or grease everywhere, that's going to affect the taste of the food, I assume. Like, I'd always spend time deep cleaning. Which, like, I'd always get annoyed when people just stand around and do nothing. It's like, I understand that, like, it's a not a fun job to do. But also, like, do you not feel bad, like, doing nothing all day? Doesn't that get boring? Also, I find it super satisfying to clean stuff, granted, on my own terms. Like, if I, like, when I was little, if I was told to clean my room, I'd get so mad. Because, <laughs> like, I low-key find clutter comforting to an extent. Like, my room, this area is clean, but everywhere else is clutter, I swear. <laughs> no, frick, one wrong container. There we go. So like if the food is really good, it would take like a lot to look past how clean the restaurant is. Because if you see a dirty restaurant, you can only imply that they don't like wash their hands, they don't follow food safety. And I guarantee the places that I worked at, they were not food safe. So just saying. I mean, if you were there on a day I was working, like, you'd get good food. Like, I wash my hands, I wear gloves, which seems like the minimum, right? But some people, you have to tell them to wash their hands. And I was like, dude, I don't understand. 
I think a lot of it is because, like, when you cook at home, do you really wash your hands as much as you should? Probably not. Mainly because, like, you're cooking for yourself, so you're used to your own, like, germs, right? But when you're cooking for the public, people have different immunity levels. That's also how, like, hepatitis spreads if you don't properly handle certain foods, especially poultries and meats. But a lot of people who I have found that don't follow food safety are, like, really self-centered. Not egotistical, rather, but... They don't look past themselves, which is kind of sad to see, right? That's why. I I know when I go out to eat, I know they don't follow food safety. I know they don't. But the restaurants where they have, like, kitchens in the lobby, or where they cook in front of you, and they don't follow food safety? Oh my god, there was one time I went to a burger place. I'm not gonna say the name. And I'm not the kind of person to, like, Call stuff out. I never used to be, but once I started working in food and started working management, um, because I know people will act good and nice when I'm there, right? But once I'm gone, who knows, right? So I told, I promised to myself that if I ever see something that's like bad or not following proper procedure, I will ask for a manager because that's what I would hope customers would do if. A customer saw one of my employees not following procedure, right? Um, so I went to a burger place, and it's a place where they cook in front of you in the lobby. And there were these two workers, and they were doing assembly. So granted, the only stations that touch food directly at this place would be assembly, so like assembling buns, patties, and condiments, right? And like on the grill, you're handling the spatula. So you're not necessarily touching the actual patty directly, so it's kind of fine. But also, don't be, like, switching stations, that type of thing. Anyway, so the two people at the assembly station, they were, like, messing around, you know, goofing, gaffing, forcing. And they were, like, poking each other. They were... This is during pandemic, right? They were, like, pulling each other's masks off and, like, snapping it back on their face. So, one... Don't touch each other. Two, why are you touching the masks? Like, that's biohazard at that point, right? <laughs> and then they go back to, like, assembling the food. Without changing gloves, without washing hands. And it's just like, oh my god. What are you doing? Literally, what are you doing? And, like, no one else says anything in the lobby. Because there's, like, maybe a few other people, customers in the lobby. Obviously, they aren't paying attention. But, like, if I see someone making my food, I will watch them. Like, I got my eyes on you, right? So I see them, and they're making my, bur my burger. And I'm like, fuck. I'm like, oh, no. Because I was debating at that point. I was like, I really don't want to say anything because that's rude. But also, it's kind of not rude to, like, call stuff out if they're not being food safe, right? Um, so, like, they call my order. I grab my food. And I stand at the counter for a solid minute, and a worker comes back. They're like, are you okay? Do you need something? And I was like, can I speak to a manager? <laughs> like, I said it so timidly, because I was embarrassed to, like, even ask. So, like, manager wasn't in the front kitchen. They were in the back room. So, obviously, they didn't see what happened, right? So, I explained to the manager what happened, and she's like, oh, yeah, that's not okay. She's like, thank you for telling me. And I basically told her, I was like, yeah, this is what happened. I also work in food, so I know if I saw one of my employees do this and I wasn't there, like, I would uh, highly encourage customers to call people out on it. And she's like, yeah, I agree. So, like, she's like, do you want a refund? I'm like, no, it's it's fine. Like, I went home and I threw away the food. Because, like, at that point... Because <clears throat> the way I see it, if someone complains and they ask for a refund and they take the food home, it's kind of like... There's a kind of... Um, connotation to where like oh they intentionally like possibly lie just to get free food right but i didn't ask for a refund i just threw the food away because i was like i don't I'm not the manager to think i'm lying right so as i'm walking out the manager starts screaming at the employees in the front lobby and i'm like oh my god oh no <laughs> like i felt so bad for those employees but also like 
It's during pandemic. Like, you can't be doing that shit. I mean, you shouldn't be doing it anyway, but especially during pandemic. It's not, not, not a good look. Anyway, I don't go out much, so I don't really see... I don't really have the opportunity to, opportunity to complain about stuff. Um, I can't really think of um, any other time. The only other time that like food safety stuff wasn't like up to par was when I actually worked at the place. And it sucks because when everyone doesn't follow the rules, you're kind of peer pressured to also not follow, right? Because <clears throat> I'm very adamant. I'm really consistent. I've only really messed up food safety stuff maybe once or twice. Hi, Rady! Hope we're doing well today. Thank you for coming into stream. Uh, I've, I've only really slipped up food safety stuff. I can only recall like two times. And both of which were times when it was like really busy and I forgot to like not switch my gloves or something. Which is not that big a deal, but also there's worse things you could do, right? Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. It's hard to like, follow the rules is everyone else is not following them, right? Because washing hands takes 45 seconds to a minute to do it properly. So when everyone is not washing their hands to save that minute, it's kind of like, you feel bad for, like, being slower than everyone else, but also, you shouldn't feel bad because you're following the rules. I don't know, it just sucked. It was not fun working at those places. But it's whatever. And what what's weird to me, just in general, is when you watch like cooking videos, the people aren't wearing gloves. But granted, they're probably only cooking for like the video. They're probably not cooking for actual like people. So it's just weird to me. Like <laughs> a lot of streamers are watching Master Chef, right? And I'm just watching all the cook all the home cooks like use. Or not cook without gloves on. And it's just, it's off putting to me because I'm so used to seeing gloves. It, it's weird, it's weird. I like, because me and my sister will watch it and she, she's never worked in food, thank God, because she would like actually flip her shit. Like she would not be able to handle it. <laughs> yeah, she was getting banned. Um, Hassan's DMCA claim for the MasterChef through Fox was a false claim. So MasterChef is back on the table, so hopefully. <laughs> He's gonna watch that later today, because I honestly miss it. Um, yeah, let's go. I I love the Master Chef meta. I don't really the same. So me and my sister are watching it. So we we're just like cringing to ourselves the whole time because like they're not being food safe. And when like pro chefs use the towel on their shoulder, I do not understand because they're using that towel to like wipe their hand. You're using that towel to take hot things out of the oven. Oh my god, it's 9.30. And it's like, how is that towel clean? How is that towel clean the whole time you're cleaning? It's- I don't- I don't get it. I'm not like a super germaphobe, but I'm conscious to an extent. Okay, we did not get a prismatic slime. That's a big sad. You heard Pokemon had to pay 2.8 mil. That was just a headline. That's just based on if, for example, the copyright owner actually pursued uh, a claim. Because basically, like, a standard fee would have to pay, like, X amount for every viewer. Which they're not gonna do, honestly. It wouldn't be a good look. And it's kind of weird how only, like, Pokemon got claimed. So that's kind of sus. When, like, a lot of other creators are doing the exact same thing. Some with a larger audience. Yeah. That's why, like, I'm indifferent about React content. I don't- I think I would be good at React content. But I think I do that more stuff- that type of content on YouTube. Because then you have the context of being able to edit down properly. That way it's a bit more transformative. But even then, fair use is technically not covered. Like, React content. 
It's a slippery slope that I don't really want to go into as of right now. <laughs> Let's see. Man, we got like no coal. Big sad. Yeah, that was Toast who said it was probably because she's a girl. But honestly, kind of like the Hassan case, I think it not that it was a false claim, but she just got a lot more attention because just in the public eye, she's still not, like, as liked as a lot of people think she is. Like, there's definitely a lot of haters, right? And kind of like how on YouTube, if you get X amount of, like, reports on a video, then it can get taken down. So, kind of like... How, uh, let's say you have, um, like, 10,000 followers, and I say to my followers, hey, go report this individual's video. Let's say maybe 10% of those people actually do it. So that's 100 reports for no reason. People just, like, brigading or, like, rating a certain video. So, like, the algorithms, they will see if there's, like, a mass number a reporting being done in a short period of time, then the algorithm thinks like, oh, this is actually like bad content, right? That's why it's very, you have to maintain your community well if you have that large a following. I mean, at least Pokemon's unbanned, so that was cool. I watched part of her stream yesterday and it was good. <laughs> Because, like, a lot of bigger streamers, I will usually watch their YouTube rather than the streams. I think just because, like, YouTube videos fit my attention span. Like, I, sometimes I can't sit for an hour and watch a stream all the way through. That's why, like, Randy, when I'm modding for you, like, I can't do it for more than, like, an hour and a half. Like, I can't... I can't be, like, that focused for that long. Which I feel bad. But, like, I try my best. <clears throat> okay, we need to get to the mine earlier. Because we gotta grind for that prismatic slime. Because modding is totally different from watching the stream. Because when you're modding, you basically have to have your eyes on the screen the whole time. Like, you can't be, like, distracted. Or dozing off, rather. Yeah, we? Okay. No problem. Oh, it's just here. <laughs> I think the best opinion I've heard about React content is yes, it is kind of uncreative to an extent and low key kind of boring, but also. The commentary is the main aspect of that type of content. So I think that's why a lot of people get jealous of reactors. Because the people who are popular who just do react content, they're actually entertaining and engaging. And commentate in a way that is genuinely enjoyable to watch. And the people who aren't successful at react content Loki just jealous because their commentary is not as good. I think that's the best take I can say. Another thing that I will see is I see a lot of smaller creators making podcasts. Like, just from the get-go. And with podcasts, to me, in order for me to genuinely enjoy, like, the broadcast or whatever... I have to trust the actual creator because that's why I'm indifferent about doing Stardew Valley more often. I kind of want to change it to just one day a week because who's going to want to hear one, hear your opinions and also care about your opinions if they don't know you, right? Sup, King? Hi, Katie. Hi, cutie. Hope we're doing well today. Thank you for coming into chat. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so they don't know you because you're still, like, developing your character, you're still developing your on-screen personality. So what's gonna make them trust you? 
That's why if I see someone make a podcast and they're just starting, like just creating in general, I'm like, this seems kind of weird. Mainly because podcasts are highly monetizable in terms of like sponsorships and stuff. Because just based off the of numbers I've seen, people are more likely to buy a product if a podcaster recommends it versus other platforms. Because podcasts, just based off the content, you're listening to someone talk for an hour to like four hours, right? So just having that level and amount of engagement in like listen time, you're inherently going to trust that person more. That's why sponsorships will gravitate towards podcasts more than like a shout out on Twitter or Instagram. Doing dishes so you're lurking? No prob, no prob. Get to listen to my lovely voice. <laughs> Facts, yeah. That's why, like, I know you mentioned to me that doing a podcast would be fun in the future, but honestly, I'd hold off on it. Because I know all the podcasts that I listen to right now are creators who I've been watching for years. Like, the only, like, newer podcasts that I listen to that I haven't been watching their content for a while has to be The Yard and then also Chuckle Sandwich, both of which are personalities from YouTube and streaming that I've grown to, like, enjoy their content over the past year. Like, I don't listen to any podcasts to where I don't know the individual. <laughs> See, exactly. See, it works. You're like, I'll buy anything this guy talks about. <laughs> Dan Cummins? He sounds familiar. The name sounds really familiar. Oh, this guy's creeping. I think there's also like different types of audiences for podcasts. I know for me, I don't like to listen to informative or educational stuff. Because <laughs> I'm like, I just want to like have fun. I think my favorite, like, that's like the funnest to listen to is definitely the art because it's four guys, Ludwig, fuck, what I know Slime, Aiden, and Nick, Nick, I think that's his name, fuck. Um, they're all from like the Smash community. But it's just like four dudes hanging out and it's just like fun to listen to. You like funny historical macro based stuff? Ooh. I think also like I will listen to Hassan all day. <laughs> and it's I like I'm thinking about it. And I'm just like, I'm no different than the people who listen to Fox News all day. Like, just listening to the same news source all day, every day. And I'm like, I'm no better. I'm no better than them. But also, Hassan doesn't talk about news all day, so... I know for me, a lot of the, like, content I consume is definitely for, like, background noise or white noise. Because I've tried listening to educational stuff in the background, but in order for me to, like, actually digest it, I have to, like, hone in and actually listen to it that's why i can't do like audiobooks like i tried doing audiobooks when i was doing like chores like dishes and stuff but i have to like sit down and listen i'm at the point where like anything in the background i don't like listen to is just kind of there npr is good oh yeah for sure it's been a while since I've listened to radio, but NPR was always a good station. It was either Move in 92.5 or NPR in the mornings on the rides to school. <clears throat> okay, I spent 30 minutes on one question. I think that I'm, I'm getting better, guys. I think we'll just keep on... Being able to keep on talking is... Finding connections between the topics and what you're talking about, and then also not being scared to just ramble. Because I'm trying to treat these Stardew Valley streams as just getting used to being on 
consistently. What? Oh! I mean, frick! That's my first F word today. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my. I was thinking about this earlier. To where. I was gonna tweet this out, but I was like, I, I kinda won't. Telling Rainy, oh, oh no, you can tell her that I cursed, oh no. Katie's gonna tattle on me. Anyway, <laughs> I was gonna like tweet out something, but I was like, I should not because I don't want to give people attention. But <laughs> I'll, I'll get caught, I've gotten a few comments that like, Oh, you're fat, or like, oh, you're ugly, and that's fine. I don't care. Cause like, I know that already. It's like, don't tell me what I already know, man. But like, I get irked when I get comments where it's like, you suck at Mario Kart, and it's like, I'm good. I know I'm good at the game. I know I'm not the best, but I bet I can beat a lot of people. Don't say that. I know. I know. It was a joke. I know I'm cute. Thank you, Katie. I thank you. Um, anyway. But comments saying that I'm bad at Mario Kart, I get mad at internally. I don't respond or say anything, but I just get mad. Oh, I love you too. Thank you. It was a joke. It was a joke. Okay? I don't genuinely think that. Granted, I know I'm overweight. <laughs> I'm just not at, like, I'm not too big big yet. Um... But I, I know I'm good at Mario Kart. I'm like, I'm a solid B rank. I'm not bad. I'm not good. I can't do any of the fancy gyms, but like... In some online lobbies, I get first. Like, maybe one every hundred times I play. I can't wait till I get affiliate. You're- I'm bad at starting money. I am not. I am not. I watch you play and I get mad. How am I bad at mining? D explain. Explain. I'm like upset at your comment, Katie. <laughs> How am I bad? Tell me. <laughs> I'm not bad. Okay, you're not. Thank you. You're playing? Okay, good. <laughs> I was ready to, like, time you out, man. I was like, oop. <laughs> okay. It's hard to tell when people are trolling, right? Like, sometimes if I, I know the message is gonna be, like, kinda off or kinda mean, like, kind of like a jab, I will either put, like, a lol emote or, like, copium. Copium is the funniest shit. Oh my god. Because to me, like, uh, emojis or emotes, like, lighten the blow a little bit. I also do the emotes when I text as well. And I remember when... It was like, I was making a new friend and we were, like, texting each other back and forth. And, like, I would make jokes and I would put, like, emojis behind him. And he was like, why are you doing that? And I'm like, hey, it's a signal to tell you that I'm actually joking. I'm not being mean, it's just a joke. And he's like, oh, okay. So now... <laughs> A lot of our text logs is just like sarcastic jokes and they all have emotes after each other. So it's just a chain of messages of like trolly disses and then <laughs> the crying laughing emote. And it's the funniest thing. I love Kobe. Oh my god, it's my favorite new um, Peppy emote. It's so good. I was using that a lot last night in your chat, and I was having so much fun. I'm so- I, okay, I'm glad I taught you how to enable them. Because if I did not have those emotes, I'd genuinely be, be so much sadder in chat. Especially in, like, bigger streamers' chats. The only- a lot of my logs is just, like, trolly, but not too trolly stuff, and then with an emoji behind it. <clears throat> because- when you're modding for a channel that big, you can't really tell if people are being genuinely mean or just joking. 
so I'm very hesitant with the messages I leave. Chat was lit because of it. Oh, yeah, I did. I'm glad that you like the blob dance emotes, though. I have some enabled in my chat, too. Um, <clears throat> but I know for me, see, I've said this before, but seeing, like, a chat that is emote spam in some, like, comments, that's best chat. But it's just, like, a visually fun chat to look at, too. Yeah, Bob Dance! <laughs> it's so cute, I love it. Oh, this is the wrong container. I'm gonna be pretty sad if we don't get that prismatic slime by the end of the week. I'm gonna be sad. Might get mad. I keep on forgetting that I can drink the coffee. Badge. <laughs> I also found out that there's a Madge emote. I don't have it enabled, but it's basically Sag, but with an angry face. <laughs> And I love it, because I didn't know that about existed, but it's so funny. Oh fuck, I don't want to sell that truffle. There we go, saved. <clears throat> See, we just need to get more chatters into emote culture, that way your chat kitty is just emote spam. That's what we need. Because a lot of chatters, they will copy other chatters' behaviors. So if they see that your chat is, like, really trolly, they'll be trolly. If they see your chat being really, like, wholesome, they'll be wholesome. If they see emote spam, they will copy it. So we just got to teach your friends how to use emotes and shit. I think another thing is, I don't think a lot of streamers will watch other people's content. I think a really good example of someone who, like, learned from other creators and streamers is definitely Mizka. Because he was saying how he started streaming in either 2017 or 2018, but... He's been watching Twitch for like years, right? So he said, he's like, I studied everything. He's like, I studied chat culture, I studied like what, what other streamers did. And he's really successful. Like he really popped off this past year. Cause like the way he commentates, he has like the mindset of a chatter and it's really fun to watch him. I know Loki cringe to say you like Ms. Kiv, but I love his content. It's it's so good. Cause it just feels like you're watching a kid. <laughs> Cause he just has such ADD brain. I mean I think just streaming in general has made me be able to concentrate less because I have my TV straight ahead and then my laptop on a desk in front of me. And since I don't have double monitors, I just have- I have four windows up on my screen right now. I have a window for straight- nope, I don't use OBS. I use Twitch Studio. I have two windows for chat. One window is just like my chat box, and then um, the other is um, my mod view, because I don't have mod such. Um, that way I can enable different chat modes. If needed. And then I also have my topic generator, which I usually don't have for every stream, so I usually will have at least three windows up. <clears throat> oh, why'd I get so much honey? I 
I wonder if different honeys make different meads. I don't think they do. I think they all just make mead. I want to make more preserve jars. I have, like, none. And by none, I mean just not enough. I need more. Oh, it's Wednesday. The store is probably still closed, Sag. I was gonna probably buy more radish seeds. Oh, they're not beets, they're radishes, huh? Called them beets earlier. Like I said, I don't eat veggies, so I, I, I can't tell the difference. They're all just bad and achy. Do I have rabbits? Yeah, I must have rabbits. I just haven't gotten a rabbit's foot yet. L. There we go. I swear this part of depositing all the milks and eggs is the hardest part of the game for me. Lurking? Okay. Thank you for lurking. I appreciate you. You will be missed. <laughs> oh, I, I just put that drop box by the shed, and I totally didn't use it. Badge. Because I want to move all these fruits and veggies crates by the shed at some point. Man, I haven't put my ring light on in a few days. And it's really bright, man. It may not look as bright on camera, but it's a little bit bright. Okay, I actually have to go feed my wood stove. So I will be right back. We got beat. I am back. I also realized why my light is so bright is because um, I have my second room light on for ambiance. That way, my ring light appears to be less bright <laughs> and it doesn't like pierce my vision. So that's why she seemed a little bright today. I also have like the blue light reduction on my glasses, but I honestly can't tell the difference. Like my dad, he went to the doctors because he's pr probably finally going to get glasses because he has, um, his vision is basically translated. So his vision at all times, it's kind of like a chameleon to where they can see two different like directions at once is similar to that where like one eye sees here and then the other is like translated up a little bit so it kind of looks like he's always in vertigo <laughs> so 
So, um, which sucks. It, I honestly admire how well he can, like, do his daily functions and not, like, be stressed out all the time. But he went to the doctor and there's apparently some specialty lenses you can get that are, like, tilted in a way that will make that translated image for, like, vertigo stop. Which is amazing to me, because I honestly thought that there'd be, like, no cure for it, right? But, <laughs> they were telling him, oh yeah, your glasses are gonna be, like, a thousand dollars. And he's like, what? But, of course, you know when you go to the glasses, they always try to up you, uh, or upsell you. All the additional add-ons, so, like, the durable lenses, or blue light protection, or anti-glare. And it's like, you, you honestly don't need it, this... Not too big a difference. The anti-glare, all the times that I've gotten the anti-glare finish, I literally cannot tell. Like, if you're looking directly at a light, it does nothing. Also, the lenses to where they change um, shades in light, how they'll change to transparent to like dark gray in sunlight. To me, they're DOM because you can't manually change them back to transparent. So, I know everyone experienced this, but when they'd go inside, it would still stay gray for like a couple minutes. So it's like you're wearing sunglasses inside, which is not fun. So I looked at the like brochure that my dad took home. And I was like, Dad, you can literally shave off five hundred dollars from these glasses. You literally do not need any of these finishes. And he's like, Oh yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Because, like, my dad's the kind of guy to so if there's, like, a salesman, he'll listen to all their pitches. Because, like, he himself is a sales guy. So, like, he respects their time. It's really sweet. But I'm like, Dad, you really do not need literally every single finisher on your glasses. I'm gonna go ahead and get another topic queued up. Oh, this one's boring. What's your favorite holiday? Christmas. Easy clap. We're not religious, but we get presents, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, we didn't do Christmas this year. Like, we didn't do presents either, because, like, we're poor. And we all, like, we don't have any kids in the house either, so there's no real need to, like, pretend that, um... That Santa is around, right? He, he just skips our house That now that we're adults. He's, he's totally real. He just skips our house. That's what happens now. <laughs> Me hoping no kids are watching. Yeah, so we skipped Christmas this year, but all the years leading up to... Like, maybe I was 13, we'd get a budget for Christmas. So me and my sister would each get like a hundred bucks. This is what our parents started doing this when we were maybe eight and ten. Because we were kind of old enough to like grasp the concept of money. I mean prior to that my parents would just get the Toys R Us like toy catalog of the year and then have a circle whatever we wanted. And then we'd get like five things because we were still poor then. We just circle everything in the catalog. But generally, we would like circle like all the Polly Pockets, all the little pet shop toys. We were like into bars, but not like into Barbies. Yeah, so when we were like 8 and 10, our parents would give us a budget and they'd take us to the store and they would, because like we understood that like Santa was around but kind of not like the real deal right so up until we were like maybe 11 or i was alone my sister and then they're like oh yeah santa's just like he got a little busy so mom and dad are gonna help him this year and we're like okay because ultimately we were never like too attached to the idea of santa and oh my god i for the long um maybe up until i was like um, eight? I assume it's fairly common. But like your local 
like fire <laughs> your local fire truck your fire department will like drive around town and like have santa on the fire truck and they pass out candy canes or candy and i mean at least they do that in our town so they drive through all the residential areas and all the kids will be like yay santa but one year i think i had to be like i think my parents stopped doing this when i was seven but by coincidence um my dad would leave the house like 20 minutes before santa would be scheduled to drive through our our town and then the um, fire truck would drive past our house and by coincidence santa would like knock at our door and then he'd come in our house and like ask us what we wanted for christmas and me and my sister we genuinely believed that it was actually santa like oh my god looking back this was the stupidest thing um <laughs> because that picture so my mom would take a picture of santa uh, and me and my sister sitting on his lap right and that would be the christmas card every year and it only dawned to me recently when i when those pictures resurfaced where i was like that santa looks a lot like my dad <laughs> <laughs> so, me and my sister genuinely thought like a stranger would be allowed to come in our house. It did not dawn to us that one, Santa was like really short, because my dad is kind of short. <laughs> and two, like Santa's face looked exactly like dad's. <laughs> but oh my god. I think when Santa stopped coming in our house, I think that's when we stopped believing. Oh my god, good times, good times, y'all. And I remember, <laughs> an like, another reason why it didn't dawn to me that it was our dad, right? So, like, I'd go to school the next day and be like, Oh my god! Santa came to my house! And all my friends and classmates would be like, You're lying. No shot. And I'd be like, No, he did! <laughs> and it, it never occurred to me. Oh my god. Kids are so gullible, my god. Get back home we go. This part too, putting items away, is very hard for me as well. Because <clears throat> you're putting in a lot of commands in quick succession, I think. Makes my brain work extra hard. Oh, we got 34 coal? Oops, wrong way. Woodstone coal, woodstone coal. Okay, you're ready for tomorrow. Oh 
my god. I can't wait <laughs> to play more Pokemon Unite. I only got to play one game earlier. Because I didn't get to sleep a lot last night, so I slept. Or, I didn't like sleeping. Why don't you stream it? Okay, I know if I stream Pokemon Unite, one, I'm not good enough yet. And I've been stuck at expert rank, which is in the middle. Because there's two ranks below, two ranks higher. I've been stuck in expert rank for a week now. And it's frustrating because I know I, or rather, I think I know how to play. Like, am, I'm an attacker. And then I also will, like, grind to get points. Because the point of the game is to score points, okay? It's not to fight Pokemon, it's to score points. And you can tell who is a new player because they will chase other players around and just kill them. It's like, no, the point, the way to win the game is to score points. So when I see other players run around and just chase other Pokemon around, I'm like, oh, this guy does not know what they're doing. Because when you're chasing other Pokemon away, you're wasting your time. Because you have 10 minutes to score points, right? And I think the game where our team got the most points was like 900. Because each player was able to score at least 200 points, which is an insane match. It was actually insane. Um... And also, another reason why I don't want to stream Unite is because it's very hard to commentate over. Kind of like League, there's not much you can really say because the strategy is fairly straightforward and you usually will do the same strategy over and over again once you learn what strategy is easier and best for you, right? So it's not really... There's no real... Um, differentiating between each stream of it, I guess. Like, it's usually gonna be the same thing. That's why, like, I'm indifferent about wanting to stream Stardew Valley more because it's basically the same day, or the same game every day that you play. As with, like, any game you play. But the main differentiating factor is gonna be your commentary. Like, that's why, like, I feel bad whenever I talk about the same things every stream. Because I just feel like there's no new sub substance coming from it. Which I feel will happen if I do Pokemon Unite. Like, there will come a day to where I will do like a 24 Pokemon un hour Unite stream. Because like, I, c I can do it. I can play that game for hours. But I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off for now. <laughs> That's why, like, I think Mario Kart, or, like, racing games in general, are just, one, fun to watch. They're usually pretty, or, pretty fast-paced. So, it's very hard to, like, want to look away from the screen. Also, in Mario Kart, the matches are, or races are really quick. So, it's able to keep my attention span. I forgot to deposit my eggs in milk. But, like, League games? Like, I know me as a viewer, I can't sit down and watch a whole League game without getting bored sometimes. It's also because, like, I'm not into into League. Like, I know the basic concept. But I'm such a stickler for, like, nice graphics. I like when stuff is, like, bright and pretty. Like, I understand League, I respect it, but it's just not to look at. It's a bit too dark for me. Not that it's like dark evil. It's just like hard to see sometimes. I might get into League, but I also don't want to be a nerd. So <laughs> one day, one day I'll play it. Whenever I play Pokemon Unite 2, I wonder how many, like, kids are playing. Because sometimes I get, not mad mad, but I get, like, annoyed with my team. 
Because I just see some people, like, standing there doing nothing. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Or, like, when people take your kill. Oh my god, it, it's aggravating. Not many things get me tilted, but that does. <clears throat> okay, back to mining. Also, I think our house upgrade just costs 100k. So we can maybe do that. Check in with Robin. Where is she? It's only Thursday. She only leaves the house on Tuesdays and Fridays. How is she not there? It's a Thursday. That's annoying. Whatever, it's fine. We don't need that cellar yet, I guess. I'm gonna get some water real quick. Bro, I suck at combat in this game. I just button mash and hope for the best. <laughs> I know you can aim, and I know some weapons can, like, block. And some weapons can, like, shoot enemies back. But I'm just so comfortable with the sword, because I can just button mash. And usually I will get out alive. Bro, I feel like my voice is something else today. I feel like it's a lot higher pitch than normal. I also had some spicy ramen earlier, so that could be it. I hate when you get a ramen, because usually they will like separate the spicy seasonings or sauces in different packets, but this one, it was mild, but even then it was still a bit much for me. So like I added cheese and like a little bit of heavy cream to it because it was um, crab flavored, crab flavored base. But even then, it was a bit spicy. Like it tasted like it had chili oils. I love, yeah, I love ramen, dude. If you go to AsianMart.com, they have like the big instant ramen bowls and there's so many different flavors and they're all so good. Because a lot of them will have like dehydrated fish or seafood in it. Also good. But they all have like at least 200% of your recommended dose of sodium. So you shouldn't be eating them every day. But also, they're so good. It's hard not to. Like my ideal ramen is just a regular ramen bowl with fried sunny side up egg on it. And then like a touch of shredded cheese. Is that when you get the taste of the runny egg, and then you get the little bit of like kind of fermenty edamame y taste from the shredded cheese? Mild cheddar. And it's so good. <clears throat> I want to, I think I said this last time, but like I want to get into baking, like baking stuff um, consistently from scratch, but also. I don't need to be eating sweets all the time. Like, I'm gonna try and exercise twice a day now, because as of the past couple weeks, I've been doing the Ring Fit Adventure game just about every day. Yes, there has been a few days that I skipped. Yes, I did skip today. But I only got three hours of sleep, so that's why I skipped exercise for this morning. But I think I want to start exercising for 30 minutes in the morning and then 30 minutes right before bed which is what i did yesterday and i surprisingly 
fell asleep a lot quicker than I usually did. And also, because a lot of the exercises are kind of like aerobics, a lot of focus on your glutes and your upper arm strength. Like, the first couple days I was doing, I would be drenched in sweat. I would be just like the character, just like pools of sweat coming out of every orifice. <laughs> um, but now, and that'd be after like five minutes, I'd be tuckered out. But now I can go and do the games for like 30 minutes and be fine, no sweat. So I think I could handle doing like maybe 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, and then maybe gradually work up to like 45 minutes in the morning and then 30 minutes at night. Because the exercises aren't that hard. But the upper arm ones, oh my god, they are a bit difficult. Like, I think I'm fairly strong. But I've never been able to, like, bench press anything. If I'm asked to, like, lift something, like a box, I can do that. Because that's using, like, your whole body to pick it up. But if I have to carry stuff with just my arms, I can't do it anymore. Okay, it's 6.40, so we got a little bit more time. Still no sight of that prismatic slime, unfortunately. I kind of want to play the Ring Fit Adventure game on stream, but one, I'm probably going to get like meaner comments on it. Or like also, it's just going to get clipped by like perverts, so I'm like, let's hold off on that for now. Because my ideal stream schedule would be a few days a week and then do a three to four hour stream playing two different games. So kind of more like a broadcast television channel to where there's different time slots and segments for different shows. Like what I wanted to do initially when I started streaming was do um, an hour of gaming and then an hour to two hours of art, which I tried for a couple weeks when I first started. It, or once I first got my capture card working properly. <laughs> And it did alright. I know a few of my chatters were like, oh! Because <laughs> um, I tried days where I did gaming first and days where I did art first. And it was so fun because uh, one of my main chatters, Yana, she was like, it's nice because you get to do games and then like art is a little treat at the end of the stream. But she draws as well. And we're, all, we're both really encouraging with each other because we've all had our share of art blocks. <clears throat> but she and I both haven't streamed art stuff in a while. <laughs> I think because art and like the creative tab is still a bit too niche for Twitch. It's not there yet. I also need to draw more. I told myself this week I would spend yesterday cleaning my room, which I didn't do. And then Friday I'm gonna actually draw something because I haven't drawn in like three months. So I'm gonna clean my room later today. I promise. And then it's just because I don't know what I want to draw. So whenever I draw, I usually will do like stylized portraits, but they're not like too complex. They're very simple line art, simple black, white, colorful. Nothing too crazy. But like, I want to try something else. But I also get discouraged because you know when you draw and it doesn't look exactly like how you want it to immediately, it's frustrating. But I know, the more you practice, the better you'll get, so... I just need to draw more of what I don't like drawing, then I'll get better at it.
Hey, it's 11 o'clock, so we should go home. Man, I like the mining levels and starting because you can just zone out. So I know when I played through the valley, it was about a year ago where I started playing, because I think I started playing in like March of last year. It was such a good escape because like I'd come home for work, play Stardew Valley for two hours, and that'd be like my chill part of the day. Because the rest of my day would be so hectic. That was when I was working two jobs. I mean, it's hard to think that I used to do that, like, work 12, 13 hours a day. Insane. Like, I don't know how I was able to handle it, man. Oh, tomorrow's Friday, so we should probably be gifting people stuff, huh? Yeah, let's give people blueberries and tomatoes. That sounds good. I'm so tempted to like order something for lunch, but I I know I don't need it. I know I don't have the money for it, but it sounds so good. So like whenever I get food delivery, I always get the same things. I I know I say I want to try new restaurants or no food but i always get the same things and i get so frustrated with myself i think it's because the one time i did choose to order from a new restaurant it was bad and i was just like i don't want to do this again <laughs> oh he's getting you dinner Ooh, nice you know what you guys are having yet or is he gonna surprise you I think my favorite fast food place has to be Panera Bread. It's like it's it's like fast food, but kind of not. It's like Chipotle, to where like it's a bit like higher end fast food. But Panera Bread has never done me wrong. It's always good. Burrito boat? Ooh, that sounds good. Oh, I need to get more fruit in here. See, if I get a burrito bowl, <laughs> it's usually just meat, rice, beans, avocado, and then maybe lettuce. Because I, I hate veggies still. I know it's so childish, but I hate them. If I get a burger, if I get lettuce on it, it has to- Okay, if it's McDonald's, I don't care because McDonald's is not top tier burgers. But like, it has to be like a leaf lettuce. I hate shredded lettuce. Because just the texture is not right if it's not eaten right away. And the thing that irks me with like, it's been a while since I've dined in a restaurant, right? But it's been a it's been a hot minute. But you know how they take all your tables entrees out at the same time, 
It's like, if you're at a table for six, they take everything out at the same time. So, like, how do you not know how long your food has been sitting for? Because I know most kitchens will do prep and make entrees to where they do line up on time. But, like, what if Bobby here messes up and burns your fish? You gotta start, from, start over, right? So... Everyone else's entree is ready, sitting on the counter. Just waiting for that one entree to be done. So it's like, how long is stuff sitting for? Like, what's the standard? I don't know, it's just not fun to think about. With food service places, I just don't like to think about what could go wrong. <laughs> I just like to shove that image in the back of my mind. Okay, let's get to gifting. Hopefully my apple tree grows in time for fall. I mean, I planted it early this season, so she should be done. Harvey? Is that his name? Yeah, Harvey. I don't talk to this guy. <laughs> People don't get sick much during the summer. That's nice, but it also means less business for me. A <laughs> big pharma, am I right? <laughs> Let's not dive into that topic. That's <laughs> something. That's a political podcast topic, not a fun, sturdy stream. Does she like blueberries? Guess not. To think I used to simp for Abigail. Imagine. Oh, George likes tomatoes. He actually likes something. Where's Pam? I don't know if y'all saw it earlier. But there was eyes inside that box. Wonder what that could be. Oh, I shouldn't be gifting my tomatoes, huh? I forgot about that monthly mission. Good thing I checked it, though. <laughs> we just lost like five. Oops. Sag. Yeah, I kind of want to see if the traveling merchant has anything. Oh, I, I got a gift her this stuff, huh? Ah, she's there. Cool. Bok choy. Eh. Hey, yeah, we can buy that coconut.
Okay, we good. <laughs> this will prove useful. See, I wish there was like some fast travel or teleport system, but there is. This little mini totem things, I think. A lot of my items, I don't use them. I hoard them in anticipation that I will use them. But any chance that I should be using them, I refuse to use them. I think that's just hoarder brain kicking in. There's Evelyn. Evelyn is such a pretty name, like, I can't get over it. It's so pretty. to bring milk I always forget to bring milk for the dwarf guy Sebastian like blueberries kind of oh it's Demetrius's birthday cool we lucked out Maru, I never give Maru because I can never find her. Easy club. Let's give him some coffee. Okay, he likes the coffee. I kind of want to check out this area. And then we can head back to town. See if any of our trees grew. Oh, sheesh! There's a lot of freaking trees, man. I did not expect them to grow this fast. Oh, the sound of the wood chopping is so, like, satisfying to me. Sounds so nice. So we'll hang out here till 6.30. Ooh, the sounds, I don't know if y'all can hear it, but there's like a subtle sound of like bees or flies buzzing and I hate it. I do not like it. Nobody goes back. Oh yeah, he works at the ice cream stand. Forgot about that.
There we go. Okay, let's see if Penny is home. Nope, where is she? Huh. There she is! I usually don't care too much about the children, let's be honest. They don't need gifts. Blueberries for Leia. Elliot. Already gave Pam a gift. Good old Gus. Man, I got so many blueberries. Shane. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, Clint. Clint. Okay, the only other place we have to go is the sewer. I know we missed the children and the shop owner's wife, Abigail's mom. I know we missed her. But she's another one that's hard to find. See, she's usually in her secret room. I keep on thinking her name is Maribel, but I know that's not it. <laughs> okay, so I think tomorrow when we go to the mines, we should check my Robin's house to see if we're able to upgrade our house. Because we should be able to. Oh, I forgot to buy more seeds. Rip. See if we have. I think we have some sunflower seeds in here. So we can plant for now. Yeah, we do. Cool. Okay, end of another beautiful day. stretch <laughs> Ooh, recipe for blueberry tart. Oh, I, I really want to bake again. I really want to. <laughs> A fried mushroom from Demetrius. Dimitri. Dimitri. 
Oop, break. I did not mean to harvest that. That star fruit is almost ready. I can see it peeping out. Oh, it is ready. Okay, cool. We love that. I thought the bloom was bigger. There's more over here, Sag. It's so hard to tell when some fruits are ripe. <gasps> oh my god, look at all those tomatoes. Look at him. I like the idea of having like a farm. But it's so much work. Like even just having a garden at home is a lot is a lot sometimes. Cause when we were driving through eastern Washington, there were so many different farms. So many different like apple orchards and stuff too. Oh my god, they were so pretty. And some of the farms, they'd have like tinsel on the trees because it deters certain predators. And they were so pretty at nighttime. Like the idea of having like a huge farm is nice, but not practical at all. Okay, so we just finished that tomato mission. Oh, I just have to sell them? Okay, cool, we can do that, for sure. Oh! Look at all those pickled parsnips. Too bad you can't grow cucumbers for like actual pickles. Kind of an L. sound is so funny. <laughs> okay. Oh, I should put the honey in, huh? So 21, 47, 67, 73. <laughs> 73, we just shipped 73. So therefore, we only need 27 more to ship.
We only need 27 more tomatoes to ship. I'm saying it again because I will forget. We only need 27 more tomatoes. May I repeat? 27 tomatoes. Sounds like the overcom speaker. Where it's like... Well, Thomas Bradley, come to the principal's office. <laughs> Thomas Bradley, I repeat. <laughs> All the Thomas Bradleys and Chappie freaking out. You ship a few extra for good measure. Just in case I counted wrong. Okay, back to mining. Now please, I just want to finish this weekly mission, get that prismatic slime. Okay, I got another topic queued up. And it's saying, is it better to live where there are four seasons or where one season takes up most of the year? So I have lived in Washington for the majority of my life, but I have lived in Hawaii for a little bit as well. And I would have to say, being able to live somewhere where it's generally really nice and sunny the majority of the time is amazing. Let me say that. It's great. Like, you don't need to carry an umbrella, you don't need to carry an extra coat. Granted, rain season? Kinda rough. Because <laughs> that's when there's like typhoons in the ocean, so that's when you get like crazy rainstorms. But the rest of the year? Pretty nice. <gasps> Finally, purple mushrooms. Oh my god. But the thing about living somewhere where there's multiple seasons, you get to look forward to the upcoming seasons. To where, like, I really look forward to fall because just, it's so pretty out. Just the contrast of the leaves is so nice. Like, it's right after summer, so finally, when you get sick and tired of all the heat, a little bit of brisk, a little bit cool. It's refreshing, almost. Like, I look forward to fall. Winter, hands down the worst. Way too cold. Snow is no longer fun. Only good thing about winter is having a reason to wear layers. Legit the only reason why she's good. Oh, there's too many guys. Too many guys. Don't fuck. I mean, freak. Freak. <laughs> okay, saved. Man, that guy did not attack at all. He just ran away. Usually those guys are vicious. Like this guy, ooh, he's coming for me. <laughs> It 
Come on, give me that slime. I honestly think I might exercise early in the day, since I skipped this morning. Because I know you'll hear people say that exercising is addicting, but low-key it is. Because I know, now that I'm not like, dead exhausted after like, the workouts, it's fun. Also the game is fun, the mechanics are really fun. Oh fuck. I mean Frank. <laughs> No! I guess here really quick. I honestly should not be mining. I should be just trying to get to the bottom and then respawn to try and get that prismatic slime to spawn. But I'm not. I'm not playing how I should. Oh my god, too many. Dude, there's too many guys. Yeah, no slime, come on. I, I just want to finish this mission, guys. Just give it to me. You had nothing, Sag. Okay, let's try again. Cross our fingers we actually get one this time. Is she over here? Nope. Oh my god, figuring out how to time when to hit the slimes. Or is part of the game. <laughs> it went the wrong way. I didn't switch fast enough. Maybe Katie was right. I suck in mining. Oh! <laughs> that one genuinely scared me. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was not ready for that. <laughs> Oh, well, this guy. Oh no, oh no. I tried to dodge in Jabay, but I still got hit. Again! We're just gonna leave. <laughs> It's 9.50. Maybe we could see if there's a prismatic slime on the next level. Then we'll call it a day. Okay. 
Okay, there's none over there. None over here. Frick! There we go. Oh no! Oh no! Okay, I gotta concentrate now. Oh no! <laughs> Okay, we're gonna go now. <laughs> okay, no prismatic slime still. Oh, that was close. One more hit and I would have been a goner. Okay, so I think tomorrow, since this is the last day to get that prismatic slime, we'll just have to... Instead of focusing on getting coal, it's just a grind and try and find that slime. Inventory full, Sag. Okay, I gotta get rid of something, because I have way too many stones. I have a lot of wood, surprisingly. Okay, I'm gonna put my sap into my other container. Ah, yeah. Then we can free up three more slots, because I have a lot of sap. Okay, bedtime. I was gonna do a bit to where I spat out my water and be like, 20K, but then I thought about it and my computer's right here, and this is probably not a good idea. So, we're not gonna do that bit. <laughs> okay, last day of the week. 3k, nice. Okay, so we we have to get that prismatic slime today. Do another mini shipping bin, cool. Um put that here. Why not? We'll find a place for that later. And so many crows. I know I could put some scrap crows out, but honestly, what's the point? They don't even work. Oh, you're probably gonna buy more seeds, huh? Yeah, so I think we're gonna buy seeds, head to Robin's, see if we can upgrade the house, and then mine. Grind for that prismatic slime. Mm. 
blueberries. I think they're my favorite to harvest because like just extra spawn and the animation's so cool. Where they like bounce out. Imagine melon wine. I think it is nice how mead only takes one day to ferment. That is pretty cool. need to buy more feed as well. We'll have to make sure we get that next week. So we have enough for the rest of this week anyway. So we're fine for now. Because so now Marnie is not going to be there Monday or Tuesday. That she's open every day, but she's literally not there every day. So aggravating. I just don't get it. And they complain about their businesses failing. Like, if no one's working, guaranteed not to make money that day. Pretty simple. That's why a lot of places are like, I'd rather have a body in the store than have nobody working. No matter if they're a bad worker, as long as there's a body. We're gonna buy a handful of seeds. Then we're gonna go upgrade the house. And then grind for that prismatic. That's our game plan for today. Oh, I should have made sashimi because we're heading to the shop. I don't, honestly, side missions I will usually hold off on. I'd rather like stockpile them at once. Let's buy like 20 radishes. And that'll tide us over till at least the end of the season. Okay, seeds purchased. One thing off our list. Let's hope Robin is at the shop and she did not abandon her post like Marty does. Oh, thank god she's here. Oh yeah, okay, cool. 100k. Nice. So we should have the seller by halfway through next week. That's great. Oh, I hate when they come right for you. Yeah, let's chow some coffee down, actually. Get a little bit of boost. Yeah, no slimes here. Oh my god, there's so many guys! Oh. <laughs> yeah, let me 
should just pick up that gem instead of fighting the enemy. That was what we wanted to do. These slimes down here. Found one. Not the one we're looking for though. Yep, no shot. Yep, not here either. The thing I have noticed is I'm able to consistently talk for like the first hour, maybe hour 15, but after that, like, I kind of frizzle out. <laughs> I know that that happens, but I'm trying to get better. I know it takes time to get better at consistently engaging. That's why, like, I'm not too concerned about growth. I'd rather get better at better at it gradually over time. Oh, no! Okay. Oh my god, this guy is still alive. Okay, there we go. Sheesh. This level always has so many enemies. We're gonna heal just to be safe. Some more coffee. Because they're trying to speed run this. Yeah, I don't know what the odds of the slime actually spawning, but I know I've only seen it like four times my whole time playing this game. Oh no. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. That sucks. I still have yet to write down which weekly missions I have completed on this save. So we might have actually done this mission already. And I just fail to realize. Oh no! I panicked. In the coffee. Oh no, oh no, 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 please. Let me get out of here. Oh, saved. Yeah, we're gonna try again. Probably just have time for one more round. Let's hope she spawns this time around.
Yep, not here. Sag. Only got five more hours. Coffee. That's coming. Oh my god, it still hit. <laughs> Another one. Oh my god, I suck at combat. Oh no! Get out here! Oh, come on! Saved! <sighs> that one was close. I have to admit, that one is very close. No prismatic bucks. Where's the exit? There we go. Okay, let's cross our fingers. There's one in this level. If not, I'm gonna go cry. It's 10 o'clock. Come on. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be. around. Okay, last chance, last chance. No prismatic slimes this week. Oh, that sucks. It's whatever, though. I honestly think we did this weekly mission already. Bad face. Whoop, whoop, whoop. 
Ooh, no, let's not throw that away. <sighs> okay. Got the third week of summer done. My meat is only worth 200, that's not bad. Go cheese, 720, insane. Okay, so let's go ahead, pause, and save, and call it a day. Um, yeah, so thank you to anyone who came into the stream today. We had Hugh and Rainy come in. Thank you. I appreciate you both coming in and chatting. Um, I will be back again tomorrow, same time, 11 a.m. PST, either with more Stardew Valley or maybe Mario Kart. I don't know yet. I'm, I'll think about it. <laughs> but, yeah. I hope everyone has a great day, and I will see you all tomorrow. Okay. Bye.